I'm recording it now. Okay. This is a Board of Assessors um, demo for NearMap. Uh, members present are Roger Bradley, Bev Wheeler, and um, Kevin Pond. And Pam Wilkins will be doing the demonstration. Take it away, Pam. All right. <laughs> So as I was saying, typically with aerial imagery, it is quite costly. However, because NearMap is proactively flying, what this allows local government entities to be able to do is access state-of-the-art technology um, without incurring the cost of the flyover. You guys are not paying for any flights. You're merely just subscribing to the data that we are already collecting for your area. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize you guys. Um, so that uh, I'm able to see the majority of my screen since I am working from one computer at home. Um, I wanna make sure, can everybody see my screen okay? Yes. 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 Okay, awesome. I would encourage you with the uh, Zoom settings of your individual computers that you try to enlarge the um, screen that I'm on and uh, the, uh, excuse me, the screen that I'm sharing to be um, uh, more dominant. I went ahead and stopped my video um, just to increase the uh, bandwidth as far as uh, what you're able to see. Sometimes on Zoom, when you're sharing a screen, things can be a little bit delayed. Uh, so as I was saying, you know, we go out and we collect this data and then um, commercial clients like roofing contractors and insurance companies, as well as government entities all subscribe to it. And the benefit for local government is that they're not paying for the whole cost of the flight the way it is with typical imagery providers. Now, the thing that makes NearMap really unique besides our um, besides our business model in terms of how we provide the data to you. The other thing that makes it, it makes us unique is as I started to tell you before, we have these patented cameras. They're a wide angle lens, it sits at the belly of the plane, captures 40 to 60 images of every single point on the ground. But then we're able to process that data insanely quick and get it to you within three to 14 days. So again, with, with typical imagery companies, it's a lot of data. So they may do a spring flight, leaf off, uh, you know, March or April, you may not get that imagery all the way till November. So probably if you have any experience with mass GIS, um, you know, I hear that quite often that, you know, it takes several months to actually get access to the data. So with NearMap, because we're processing this so quickly, you're able to get access to data that is very current. The other thing that we talked about earlier is how high resolution this imagery is. So you can actually see air conditioning units, you can see um, additions in the backyards. And you know we're gonna focus on how assessors are using this imagery. But the other thing to note is that once you have a subscription to NearMap, the entire town is able to benefit. So fire, police, um, uh, conservation, public works, planning departments. I mean, they'll use the imagery to count, you know, assets, where all of our, you know, manholes, uh, where in the, where, what roads are gonna need to be repaved in next year's budget, that kind of thing. But for assessors, there's really three key components that you guys are looking for. Um, one is identifying that you know unexpected growth uh, changes in the in the uh, properties. Two, you're looking for um, ways to be able to do remote property appraisals. I mean, with COVID, that was a big thing was, you know, being able to get into the backyards, right? And now we're kind of playing catch up, trying to get to every single property that uh, wasn't seen during, during the lockdown. So assessors are able to actually use this imagery 
get a view of what's going on, determine which properties they do need to go out and make physical inspections on, what has changed, um, and even do remote property appraisal. Like they can, you guys can actually measure on this imagery and it is accurate within six inches. So if I wanted to get in here and measure this roof, I could simply uh, uh, do so by creating a polygon of any size shape. So it can get quite bespoke. You can see here that I'm able to take these measurements and, uh, sorry. <laughs> and this is actually accurate within six inch accuracy. Now, one thing to note, we have about, oh gosh, at least 35 assessors just in Massachusetts alone who are all uh, relying on NearMap for this data. And uh, it's something that I've heard um, quite frequently that the Department of Revenue is accepting um, as uh, verified data for remote property appraisal. So like I said, you know, that non-permitted growth, remote property appraisals, and also just reducing appeals. You know, if somebody says, no, you know, that deck has always been in my backyard, uh, that's nothing new. And you can go back into our historical data and um, send them a snapshot from, you know, 2017 when that deck was clearly not there, it's going to reduce those appeals. Now, um, I started to mention about our historical data. So we have been flying you guys, I think since 2014. You'll notice here too, that I'm able to pan and zoom very quickly. Um, the imagery is extremely lightweight and it's stored in the cloud. So the way we're accessing this data right now is just through an online uh, portal. So you can work from anywhere. If you have an internet connection, you're able to access this data even from home like I am right now. It's extremely simple to use. It's about as easy as doing a Google search. You can plug in an address right here and it will take you right there. Um, I utilize some artificial intelligence to identify this great area here that's gone through a lot of growth over the years as a good example. Um, you notice here that the last time we flew you was April 3rd, 2021. As I mentioned, this data was probably uploaded by April 10th. So it's very quick. Um, but as you can see here, going through the data, we have been flying you guys all the way back since 2014. So when you subscribe to NearMap, you not only get a flight. It's not like purchasing a flight and that's all you get. You have access to our online catalog of all of the imagery as it's changed. So I can go through here and I can look at this project and see the change over time. So as we're scrolling back, you can see the construction as it was going on. And in fact, I can take any two vintages I'm gonna zoom in here a bit so you can really see. You can see these changes over time. In fact, oh, no. one assessor, who is that? That was me, I said, that's nice. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, cause I have you guys minimized, so I can't see you. Um, so one assessor in Massachusetts was telling me they had a general contractor who's, uh, you know, lives in the community and just kind of felt like he was above the law. He didn't need to permit the whole second addition he did to the, the back of his house. And so they were actually able to, her and the assistant assessor were able to use these tools and just go right in and measure the extra area that he had in the back of the house and be able to reevaluate that property. So yeah, you can see here what I'm doing, just going side by side and seeing those differences. Now this is the ortho imagery. This is that straight down view, um, but also we can actually go in and look at the sides of the property. So I'm gonna switch real quick to the panorama. And what the panorama allows us to do 
is be able to see the project and how it relates to everything around it, right? So if you're looking at a single family home, for example, you wanna know, is it surrounded by condominiums? Is it the smallest house on the block, the largest house on the block? How does it relate to what's around it? So what the panorama does is it allows you a wide, a wide view angle. You can also take a look at the property on all four cardinal directions just by changing this compass right here. So this gives you, you know, the ability to walk the property, um, look at, at how it relates to, the, to you know, what's um, next to it, uh, but it is not measurable because this is a, think of it like a quilt. It is taking all the oblique tiles and stitching them together. So if you want to actually do a remote property appraisal, what you would do is just switch right over to the individual oblique tile. And this will actually allow you to measure the height and width. So also what's over here on the, left is five additional um, uh, tiles so that if the um, property that you're looking for is cut off at all, you can just go right to the other tile. And from here, you're actually able to take those measurements. So I can come right over here, drop a pin and get accurate height and width within six inches. And I can do this on all four cardinal directions as well. So it, like I said, it will give me the height, it will give me the width, and then give you the choice of all four cardinal directions and also give you options in that same angle. Excuse me. There you go. Sorry, the dog was scratching at the door. <laughs> um, uh, now, the other thing that we're able to look at is I'm going to go back over to that property we were at before the, I guess that's a condominium complex, so I can stay right here. Um, the other imagery that we provide is a 3D view. So the 3D allows you to do um, an actual 360 degree view of the property walk around the property. So that I think this is the one we were looking at right here. Pam, I and think with, you, I, th I think you crossed a town border um, because where that apartment complex is, mm -hmm. is right on the border. Um, oh, okay. So I went over so, to a different town. So let's go back over here. So yeah. this is that project I was looking at earlier. Yeah. And from here, from the 3D, not only can you do uh, line of sight measurements, you can take height and width measurements, uh, excuse me, line measurements, but also you can get the elevation data of every single point on the ground. So you can see here that I have that um, point lined up right there. And if you look over here, it's gonna give me the address, the coordinates on the right, and also the elevation of that point. So when you're doing lot valuations, you're able to actually see the um, elevation to understand, you know, is it a buildable lot, right? Could you build a second, uh, second uh, um, bedroom? I was going to say um, a, a second unit, like in the backyard, oh, right? Oh, okay. Um, now, the other thing you are able to do here as well is uh, take those measurements. So you can still um, uh, take, uh, you can take, um, I forget what the word is. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. Um, um, I cannot think of it. It completely escaped. It completely escapes me what I was going to say. Sorry about that. Um, but the um, 
the viewer also, like I said, allows you just to be able to get that reality context. So if a project is getting, um, let's say a project is getting uh, put in and you want to understand what is the reality context around that existing project or excuse me around what is the existing uh, context around the project that is getting built then you're able to utilize the 3d for that you know conceptual view I know I've thrown a lot at you guys what questions do you have for me I have a question does it now you're showing us a condo on a single family residence. Does it view it off the, um, oh, what's the correct terminology? You know how when you ha have your land surveyed, they put um, markers, a marker. Does it, does it show markers on pieces of land? So if a one person said, hey, you're building a fence and it's on my property and they say, no, it isn't. So we're able to tell you exactly where the coordinates are of that particular point. Okay. So I think, I think that that may help in that regard. Okay. Um, the, as far as parcel data though, that like we, let me show you this. So we use a service called digital map products and it's provided really as a courtesy. Um, I don't know why it's not pulling up. But you're, um, again, you went into a different town. Um, sorry about that for one second. Um, I don't know why my boundaries are not pulling up. Normally it would. I think I'm back in Berlin, right? Yep. Okay. So, very soon, Bev, um, the ability to bring your parcel data, so all of the, the boundaries that you guys have, you can mm -hmm. actually bring into the map browser, which is going to be starting early 2022. Okay. Um, uh, but normally, and I don't know why it's not working for me right now. There we go. Um, you can see here in pink, we have these boundaries with parcel data. This is provided by a third party and it really is a courtesy. It's a reference guide uh, because, um, so you see there, there's the parcel data on the right side. The reason okay. why I say it's a courtesy is because um, typically your data is gonna be much more accurate than ours. So like, um, for example, Sam Kanazny in Worcester, um, what he told me when he was in Agawam is he would just hold up the near map uh, window right next to his camera system. And if he needed, let's say, 125 Main Street and it wasn't showing up in map browser yet because it was a brand new address, then he would just be able to go to 123 Main Street and it would pull up next to it so he could get close enough. And okay. that's how the assessors are using it right now. Um, and Bev, for what you were talking about, you probably really need a, a, a surveyor to go out to do that because even our assessor's maps are mm -hmm. not, um, they're for assessing purposes. They aren't for engineering or. Okay. No, I was just curious if this, yeah. you know, because a program so nice that maybe it happened to have the markers in there. So everything was like correct. Yeah, well, but pretty it, soon, like I said, you can put your data in here and it's going to okay. be much more correct than what we have. Um, and like I said, we're flying you guys three times a year, right? So um, it's constantly getting updated he, um, in the spring, leaf off, and then in the summer and in the fall. Um, the the panorama, as I mentioned, will allow you to go around. So I just want to kind of show you that with a single family home right here, because I think this is this one is particularly a good example. And then, of course, like I said, once you want to actually go in and take the measurements, you switch over to the oblique. Um, and then for visualization, you're able to use that 3D. 
And that's where you're going to get those coordinates of the points. So right. if I wanted to like go over to um, right here, I can get that point. But the thing is, for what you're talking about, to see if it's in their in their boundary or the other person's boundary, you really are going to need engineering to have those um, uh, parcel lines drawn okay. on top of the imagery. Just wishful thinking, I guess. <laughs> now, do you guys have a GIS department in in the town? No. Okay. No, we don't. We use um, Mass GIS for that function, as okay. little as it may be. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Um, out of the cities and towns that are using this uh, sub subscription, are they still going out and doing physical measurements or they just yeah. rely on this completely? That is a great question. And I think it's really up to the assessor. Um, so what, you know, uh, Richard Conti, who's the assessor over in Taunton, um, he uses this religiously um, and does take his measurements right from the map browser. Other assessors I talk to say that this saves them time to be able to know which properties they need to focus their attention on and get out and do a physical inspection. Um, however, like I said earlier, the Department of Revenue accepts the measurements that you're getting from the imagery. So, you know, um, in some cases, it'll eliminate going out altogether. In other cases, it, ju it just is used to determine which properties you need to go see. Roger, um, the Department of Revenue has not, well, it has for pandemic reasons, accepted people doing cyclical data reviews through this process or a process like this, but they haven't um, made definite guidelines yet. Mm -hmm. But it will be coming down the pike, I'm quite sure. Yeah. Because it works so well during the pandemic for them. Any other um, questions? Anybody have a property you want me to plug in? You want to see your house? <laughs> oh. How close are those property lines, for instance, those pink lines? Are they within so many feet? You know, they're, I really say they're for reference uh, because they're okay. updated by a third party and we just can't guarantee their validity. So I refer to them as guidelines. Um, okay. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't use them for assessment purposes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Kevin, even our assessing atlas is um, for assessing purposes. It's it's not a hundred percent correct if an engineer were to do it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay. Uh, what is it, that in the, in the on the left side? Is that like a little golf hole? Like, is that a practice? You see that little kidney shape? Yeah, piece can of dirt go, right there. Can you get further in? I don't know. Yes, it looks like it now that you. Where are we? Hmm. Uh, let's Probably a pin. putting green. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. So let's see where we are. Do you mean a sand strap? <laughs> <laughs> As you put on something that's green. Eight Keys Road, right, yeah, that's. Oh, I don't. Must be at the end of Keys Road. I yeah, think right. only two one houses. House on well, yep, it's definitely a golf thing.
<laughs> That's interesting, Kev, huh? <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say slide to the right. Yeah. And that abuts town property, doesn't it? It does. So if you can look at the stone wall where it butts the property, so you'd move the thing up. I don't know what that is in the middle. Big black thing? Is that a pool? I don't know what that is. Looks like a pool. Yeah, that's a if pool. If it was April, it was probably still covered. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. But my comment. Can you pop those pink lines in there? Um, not on the 3D, but I can oh, do okay. so on the vertical. So let's go back over here. And there you go. Move that so it's not in our way. Yep. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> can you just so, leave that like that and then back out? How old is that right there? What's the date on that view? April 3rd, 2021. Okay, so that's pretty current then. Okay. Yes, that's from our most recent flyover. And then we'll be, ha we'll be flying you guys here any day because historically we've flown you in the summer uh, in July. So that'll be happening here very soon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you go to um, Gates? pond what are some of those new houses address joanne it's pond uh 243 is one of them 223 maybe so i'm on gates pond i don't oh, know near river right at the at the section near river I can try to put in a specific address. Uh, what did you say? 243. No, Gates Pond, that's not the right Gates Pond that you had up. That's where the-, the That's Taylor Road. Yeah, that's where the gates are for the town of Hudson's water supply. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I, road. it said Berlin though. Yes. Okay. So this one right here, where the location dot, it brought us right to uh, 243 Gates Pond. So, so it's, wait a minute now, they have a, um, oh no, sorry, it's next door, they have a pool. Somebody has a pool and a pool house. I think that's over here, right next door, right there. Yes. The one, yep. Yeah, so this is what it looks like now. And then in September. Yeah. And that's what it looked like in March of wow. last year. So you can see where the changes are, what's taken place, right? They've added the whole patio area. They've added the walkway in the backyard. Now let's take a look here and see the panorama view. Yep, so you can see it all around. Now the other uh, um, view as well would be the 3D. The other thing I want to show you guys real quick, and I, I'm sorry for taking up too much of your time, is the artificial intelligence layers as well. Although I will say um, with the artificial intelligence, we're able to identify all of those building footprint, you know, the measurements. Um, however, to export that data so that you can read it, um, you really need to have a GIS consultant who will do that for you. Okay. So the AI layers, what we're able to identify and assessors will use this. Like for example, um, one of my assessors, she was looking at the, uh, the data that was exported for her on an Excel spreadsheet. 
and she looked at the swimming pools and said, she looked at the at what we were collecting for swimming pools. And if you you know can see here, I mean, I have it light so you can see how accurate. The AI is incredibly accurate at getting those area measurements as you can see here. And so while we were looking at her data, she said, you're measuring that swimming pool 30% bigger than what I have in my records. And sure enough, her records were from 1989. Somewhere along the way, they had completely remodeled the backyard and that reval was missed. So by getting those uh, area measurements of the swimming pools, she was able to identify um, you know, where uh, th those kinds of revaluations had been missed. What you're looking at in orange, these are the building outlines. So this gives you the area measurement um, of the building on every parcel. So uh, it's gonna have a combined uh, parcel area measurement uh, including the um, the sheds. Nice. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Can I ask a yeah. question about those? Yeah. The buildings that are, I understand when you go in spring and fall and there's no foliage, um, but there's still some trees and sticks, you know, trunks and that sort of thing. Does it still get all of those small buildings? Yeah, it's incredibly accurate. So the machine learning, what it does is it, it learns from itself um, each vintage. So each vintage, it's getting more accurate uh, than previous. So um, we, we always recommend like for building outlines, you want to use the, um, the spring capture because that is leaf off. Uh, but if you take a look here at like, for example, the tree overhang, which I'll change to green. Here's the crazy thing. Oh, this okay. is, a, so this is a spring flyover and I'm going to lighten this so that you can see it. Nice. Oh. This is a spring flyover and you can see how the foliage isn't really, let me take the AI layers off. The foliage isn't really on the, um, the um, structure, but right. because the AI knows that it's normally there, it can determine from um, the, from the, um, um, where the branches are, that there was supposed to be uh, tree coverage on that structure. Right, that's nice. That is. Yeah, it's a very cool product. And being subscription on cloud is so much easier than having to set up a server and have it flown in yourself and all that. Yeah, I mean, most of the municipalities that I talk to who have done custom flyovers, um, when they procure the flight themselves, they're looking at about 25,000. Um, with Nearmap, you know, I think we spoke about that um, before, Molly, is you're looking at, you know, if you were to get the ortho oblique and 3D viewer, you're looking at about 7,250, 7,250 for the, um, the annual subscription. And that includes unlimited users and three flights a year. So it, it's a yearly. Mm -hmm. Unlimited logins. Does everyone need a login specific? Um, yeah, so you would all use individual logins, but um, the every department can have one. Okay. Yeah. So how many login addresses would we have? We would just have one for everybody? No, so, well, it's, it's unlimited users and unlimited data usage. So you would have... Um, as many users as you want, you have control over how many people you want to add. They just have to be employees of 
the um, they have to be employees of the town. Now, there are consultants that like you guys may decide to get at some point a GIS consultant um, or like Ty and Bond who does certain things for the communities as one I can think of. Um, as long as they're using the data for the exclusive purpose of the community, then they can have a login as well. And what area would that cover if they're a Berlin employee? What do you mean, what area would it cover? So would I be able to look at an adjacent town of Hudson who's putting a road in? Would yes, I correct. So we don't geo, so we don't geofence our government customers. So you would have access to all the imagery that we fly in the United States. Nice. Which, which is quote, uh, I don't, uh, so what does that entail? How many cities, towns, whatever? So it's all of United States. If I wanted to look something up in Utah, I could do that. You could. I mean, I don't, I can't guarantee that we're flying, you know, we're probably yeah. not flying a hundred percent of Utah because we fly the most populated areas. Yeah. But, but that could happen though. Yeah. I Correct. didn't know. If, I don't know There's if I got research the budding to do towns. There. <laughs> yeah. I didn't Are you know planning got... on moving? <laughs> well, good way to check it out, right? No, but I, I didn't know if once we got to the Berlin line, you know, if I can't look into uh, Bolton that borders us, then be kind of limited. But where I can look in Bolton, I could maybe look at the Hudson line, the North Row line. That would so, be good. Okay. I'm sharing my screen again. This blue line, this blue dot is where we were in Berlin. And that all the area that you see shaded around here is where we're flying. So if I take a pin and drop it, let's say over here, that is in Princeton, Mass. Oh, okay. So I don't know if that's the adjacent town to you or not. And then there's Hollis, New Hampshire. Wow. Um, and then everything else is well covered all in here. So right. so the mm -hmm. green the green part to the left is not, yeah, over there is not covered at all. Correct. Okay, there we go. All right, yeah. However, let me go over here real quick. We just expanded our footprint for our fiscal year 22, and that wouldn't be in what we were just looking at. So let me see. How many cities and towns in Massachusetts do you have that use your product? At least 35. Uh, the Office of Emergency Management of uh, Boston is a client of ours. I mean, they're the biggest, you know, they're the second to largest public, or th excuse me, third. They're number three to Chicago, I believe. But um, uh, Boston Office of Emergency Management has a very large contract with NIRMAP. We've got 35 smaller municipalities all in uh, various parts of the state. Um, and then, of course, we have some like, uh, um, like Department of Transportation and clients like that. So I'm not sure which, uh, like on the um, state level of which uh, um, departments we're working with. Okay, so on the yep. map, oh, sorry, Kev. No, we're good. On the map so, that you're showing us now, in green, everybody is on it. In yellow, everybody is on it. In blue, everybody is on it. No, this is just how much we're flying those areas. Oh, okay. So in green, Berlin oh, is actually getting twice per year leaf on and leaf off. Okay. Okay. And in yellow. And in this yellow area on these outskirts, which um, looks like that maybe have, has just been a recent expansion, yep. they're getting uh, once a year. And what about like the few areas in blue you see? They get three times a year. Three times. Okay. Do you have the option of? Um, no, I, two, I couldn't. Three read. or four. I'm sorry, tier three. So. No, so um, 
So Berlin is in, see that red highlighted line? That is tier one, you're getting three times a year. That was very confusing. So only in your area where that red line red is, is. Oh, okay. see this? So you are yes. getting three times a year and that's okay. because you must be in the vicinity near Boston. Okay. I'm terrible at geography. I don't know. I I don't know why they have me selling maps here, but you know, <laughs> it's a job. We're right next door. We're right next door to Boston. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> We're in between Boston and Worcester. Don't give her a hard time. <laughs> okay. And the blue, the blue on Martha's Vineyard is what? Uh, blue is once per year. Okay. You're and safe there, Kev. Huh? I said you're safe there then. <laughs> yeah. Just checking. And now I knew that was Martha's Vineyard because I recently added that to our, our flight path. They weren't planning on adding it till next year, but a bunch of the towns uh, signed up. Good job nice. on that one. That yes. was good. Good yep. call. Yeah. Nantucket's <laughs> on there though. Yeah. And why is Nantucket in yellow? I guess we're going to be flying them now. Yeah. Once we a were year. before. But we're only right. flying at the orthos only. We're not flying at obliques. Okay. Uh-huh. I have one more question on the whole login thing. You said unlimited. That's unlimited the... users, unlimited yes. data usage. Yes. But at the same time, if if Molly's on it and I want to be on it. And Kevin's looking in Utah. Can we all do that at the same time? <laughs> yes. Yeah, because okay. it uses the cloud, correct? That's correct. right. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's important. <laughs> that is if we, important. As, uh, as the assessor's office uh, would be the control office, if Kevin called me up and said, I don't want so and so able to see this, we would not issue them permissions, correct? You you would get a list from us of who can. Well, you'd be responsible it. for that. So we, it, it just, we don't have any control over um, your licensing. Like it's, you don't have to report to us. So you okay. are an admin and you can shut people up. Like let's say somebody's no longer working for the town um if, if somebody's no longer working for the town i'm still here um then uh you could just shut them off but you have those admin privileges okay mm -hmm. yeah i was concerned about who's going to get this and use it freely that's a concerning fact i have I oh thought as far as sharing with the, so this is not shared with the public um some of our municipal sorry yeah my, I got my that. son locked himself out and I've been ignoring him, <laughs> but I finally had to let him in the house. That's why the dog kept barking because the son was at the door. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, so let's talk public facing. So some municipalities, really the only ones that do this are the ones who used to get imagery on their own uh, before, even before near map. And they were used to sharing it on their public facing site. Uh, they share the ortho imagery only. They're not sharing like the side views, the 3D, any of that. I would say maybe 25% of the municipalities, if that in Massachusetts, add a public facing license to share the imagery on your site. Most just keep it within the, um, within the towns. It's that not for sense. public, it's not for public view. Yeah, I caught that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Not me. No, but Not you me. Can, if, if you have other questions, you can let me know and I can always email them to Pam. Okay. Great presentation, Pam. Yes. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. And Molly, I'll touch base with you maybe tomorrow and see what the next steps are and what your timing looks like. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank have you. a good night. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy. <clears throat> Everybody still here? Yep, still here.
Aye. All right. All right. Um, do we want to start our meeting or? Yes. Can I, can I ask one question? Sure. sure. We're still recording. We are still oh. recording. Just make yep. that's okay. Just so, so you this, know that. <laughs> this program that she was just talking about, Molly, I believe maybe I heard other departments might want to use it. Well, I would think that it would benefit, like she said, police and fire, planning, so zoning. My thought is, should they share in the cost of it if they're well, going to be using it so it's not just out of our kitty, so to say? I would think that we would talk about that at budget time, but I would think that we would want control over it. So. I mean, it's, you, the same you thing hold with, the it's the same thing with our printed maps. We okay. pay, it comes out of our budget, but we give copies to other people. So it's the finance and the town management understand that. that All right. It's, it's used by more people, but it, it's, it's hard. It benefits to, everyone. It's, it's hard to split it up to make other departments do the cost. Okay. Yeah, I agree, Bob. It's a great question. It's just a town expense how, is how I look at it. Okay. Uh, it's a town expense, even though it's under us. Uh, I don't think it's coming out of our budget or hopefully not, but we would get reimbursed as a general town uh, cost of doing okay. business. Okay. So yeah, great question. Oh, you heard what I was, you know, if fire and whatever we're going to use it, maybe we could split it three ways, you know? Well, it, it, I don't think it would, the bill would be split, but it would be used by other divisions. I mean, conservation. Oh, true. Come in, true. look up a thing. The true. Earth Removal Board. Uh, quote, the Board of yep. Health. Gotcha. So, I, you know, you yep. split it up two ways and everybody learns how to use it and use it. You know, it's costing the five town, the five, uh, six, seven entities, you know, yeah. uh, short money to, to, to use it. But it's, yeah. it's hard to split up a bill, but it's, it's not hard to um, have the understanding with FinCom and, and other financial people that this is going to, it might be coming out of our budget, but it's beneficial to everybody. To everybody. Uh, it looks like a great tool. Yes, I, I do think that eventually the Department of Revenue is going to do some kind of recommendation on being able to um, use a program like this. I think it's in the works. Nice. So um, we'll wait to see. We just have to figure out how to pay for it. Okay. Yeah. Molly, from my understanding, though, the state and maybe it's changed since COVID, only allows a tape measured distance on a house. No, during, uh, during that, yeah. they've loosened that up a little. They okay. have, they are accepting aerial, this kind of programming for inspections, especially during COVID that people couldn't, we couldn't get out to the properties at. Right, but I'm just wondering if we ever get out of this COVID business, are they gonna quote, lean towards the tape measure? Which again, doesn't, which doesn't mean I don't dislike her program, so to speak, but I'm just wondering if that is the quote, absolute preferred method is the tape measure. It's in the process of changing, I'm sure. Okay, to be more general then. Yes. Okay, yep, I'm good with that. So, want to just call a little short meeting? Um, or... Yeah, do you want me to read this? I got to turn the light on, so that's going to cost no, you. No, you can just um, do the voice. So it's 749. Okay. And I'll just do attendees present, Kevin Pond. Here. Bev Wheeler. Here. 
Roger Bradley. Here. I'm here. And Joanne. Uh, I'm here. Data list. Yep. We have no guests. Did everybody get a chance to read the minutes? I did. Um, yep. Anybody want to make a motion to? I'll make a motion. We'll second it. All, All those, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, there's a vote. I'm going to, I will re-put all this correspondence. It's just the yearly stuff from the DOR um, on the next meeting agenda. Okay. And um, you all had seen the Berlin Code of Conduct and Ethics in, um, Margaret sent them out again. I don't know if somebody's having a problem, but she wants, she sent them out to, I guess, chairs last time and she wants committee and now she's sending it a reminder to boards and committees um, that this workplace code of conduct is in place and you really need to read it over. <clears throat> so is it different from the one everyone just signed? No, it's just okay. a reminder. I guess she didn't get a good, she didn't get a good response back. So she's sending it out again. You guys, you guys signed all your things and did all your stuff. I'm just telling you that there's still issues with code of conduct. So I, I don't think that's going away. No, probably not. <laughs> um, and we did our, <clears throat> we balanced out for June. So we're all set with the budget and all that stuff. What I really wanted you guys to look at was, so, how you're getting paid. Do you wanna do it quarterly, biannually, yearly? I just, I sent you out, I scanned and sent you out. Oh, it's been a long day <laughs> at, at quarterly. So you guys can think about that. And then um, we're still doing, we're, gearing up on VADAR and we'll be coming up with more and new uh, motor vehicle processes to go through. I sent you out a little a taste of what we had discovered so far. Yeah. And then I just want you to be able to, uh, sorry, my tongue either is, it's, it's letting me down. <laughs> Signature items, the reorg memo that you voted on last meeting, which was in June, accounts payable, payroll, um, and the new VADAR commitments and abatements in a senior okay. work off payroll form that needs to go out. So that quick and dirty, I just basically needed you guys to be able to come in and sign some stuff. Sure. When does it have to be done by, Paul? Well, um, this morning. <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, sorry. Did I say that out loud? The, this week would be good. Okay. All right. Yeah, payroll has to be done before Thursday. If you want me to meet you some, if you want me to bring them to your house, that's fine, too. Uh, let me see what tomorrow. I'll make a note to myself and see what time I get out tomorrow and then I'll give you a call. Okay. And see where we are. Okay. And Roger, I can leave them someplace for you to sign if you can't make it here. Um are you you're you're there now? I can run down. Yep, yeah, I'll be here for a few minutes after the meeting ends. Okay. Okay. I can do that. Um how much I'll come tomorrow more. Okay. How much signing needs to be done down there, Molly? There's, 
you need to sign payroll and then there's 10 items how long it three or four well five or ten minutes okay all right well rod you want to pick me up if you're going down and i'll get down there with yeah. you okay, okay. so our Can next meeting go ahead next meetings are scheduled for august 9th in the 21st and that's it 20, so it's 23rd one did you say yes 24th? i also i also sent you scanned you out the schedule of meetings for the entire year i, I saw yes. that that was nice yes so but the next meetings are august 9th and 23rd okay and we are going to go over this draft thing for uh, motor vehicle then a little bit. Yeah, okay. next, yeah, next meeting, because I'm sure we're going to come up with new and interesting little things as we continue to learn. I just okay. wanted to keep, I wanted to keep it in sort of order as we go along. Okay. All right. Oh. Sounds so, good. We're good. Okay. Meeting, meeting adjourned at 756. Yes. And yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous.